Hey everybody, just thought I'd throw something in here real quick um, about the conversion system that we're using here at Speedtrap uh, to work with a lot of the journal bearing turbochargers that we specialize in. Now, if you notice in uh, many of the turbochargers that are being used that are journal bearing directly from Garrett, uh, Garrett still has not released, uh, on its own anyway, uh, any type of uh, turbine housing that still has burst containment within it and at the same time has a conical V-band flange. Uh, this particular one here that I'm showing you is from a GT3076R, GTX 3076R from the GT line, uh, which has a different cartridge width than that of the journal bearing. Okay, So this is why you can't simply use a GT housing onto a journal bearing cartridge. Uh, the machine lips are, are of a different width. The exhaust wheel profiles behind them that go into the volutes are of a different profile and diameter, and, and therefore they don't just simply cross over. But a lot of people still want to be able to have V-band downpipes. Uh, that's really important for ease of dismantling the turbo system or being able to access other uh, areas within the engine bay. So what are you kind of stuck with? Well, some manufacturers who were lucky enough to be able to have the capital do it, uh, especially from uh, different competing brands, uh, actually have a turbine housing that has that works with this. It looks as though it's a T3 inlet and it's got the same uh, similar uh, V-band flange, but I notice that most of them aren't conical like this, which actually does help with not only putting distance uh, for the flanging to easy access, but it also helps with the vortex effect with the exhaust gas energy. So what they typically do is they'll have one cast like this, but for proprietary reasons, it's not a full 3-inch outlet. It's usually 2.75 or 2.85, so uh, or even close to that. So you really want to be able to make sure uh, that their V-band and their flanging system all works with that particular turbo. But if you change turbos over to a Garrett or to something else, you can't use that V-band flange system. So what do you do? Well, other companies have also decided to try, if they can't cast one because it's so expensive to do, they'll get one of these standard ones that they have already and then weld their own flange system to it. Usually they'll get them from an aftermarket company of some sort and be able to weld directly to that, but again, it's typically not a full three inch. It's usually something very close to that because of proprietary reasons. The other issue that you kind of come up with is that you have to be able to make sure that your welder uh, uses the correct material uh, and the right amount of heat and right amount of penetration to be able to penetrate this cast flange and center it properly for it to be able to fit. The only reason why we find this a little bit troubling is because of the fact that if they don't do that, it's an automatic cause of an of a exhaust leak waiting to happen because that type of welding material is going to crack and therefore cause an exhaust leak within the exhaust downpipe. This could uh, cause intermittent uh, problems with the car itself, uh, unstable boost, that kind of thing, other issues. So you want to be careful with that because that possibility, even though it's there, and less expensive than sitting up here buying a whole new cast housing that could do the same thing, you still want to be able to stay cost effective. So we found a solution for this. It's not a unique or proprietary solution, it's not patented in any way, shape, or form, but we find that it's a really good use to be able to use for those that have a journal bearing or a ball bearing cartridge that uses the standard uh, T31 four bolt housing like this one here and then they still want to be able to have a V-band. So what we did was we're starting to incorporate this. This is a three piece uh, conversion flange system which contains a 2.5 inch to 3 inch V-band conversion flange, a weld flange, and a double wide uh, T-bolt clamp to be able to fit this because of the fact that it's a little bit thicker than most. The cool part about this is that this is all stainless steel, all three pieces, and it fits over the housing well enough so that you don't have any interference within that flange, still have the correct opening, and at the same time be able to convert it to a V-band flange that will fit a tile weld flange. The cool part about this part is if you want to be able to dismantle this to be able to sell the turbo or to go to something else, you can do so without having to worry about buying another housing to be able to replace this, trying to cut off the flange, or literally uh, selling the turbo for a lot less money in case they only have a four bolt uh, weld flange. So how does this really work? It's really simple. You're going to need the three piece system 
and you're going to need, which comes in one kit, and then you're going to need four bolts. These are M8 by 1.5 20 millimeter size bolts, just slightly larger than those used on the turbine housing of the turbo, okay, in order to be able to fit it onto this flange. It's really simple actually. One simply just takes your turbine housing or the entire turbo. And the cool part is, notice how this has these U-joints here. These, uh, these U-welds are so that you can be able to put in the bolt uh, pretty easily without having to worry about any interference. In fact, you can actually start off with the first one. So I'll start that here. Go ahead and line it up. And then I'll go ahead with the other ones. Now the cool part is they'll go right in between the flange itself and the actual conversion portion of the housing to make things a little bit easier for you to set in. I really recommend using copper RVT with the uh, anti-seize, not RVT, sorry, uh, copper anti-seize in order to be able to work with this. This ensures that if you ever need to remove this for any reason, you can do so quickly and effectively without worrying about breaking any bolts inside the housing. In fact, I recommend using copper uh, anti-seize for any of the bolts uh, that you have for the turbocharger uh, on the turbine side and the cartridge. Don't need to have those for the compressor side, but you definitely need to have them for the turbine. Okay, so if you notice here that these uh, M8 by one and a half 20 millimeter bolts, uh, they usually come with a 13 millimeter uh, head that you can use to be able to tighten them. Don't need to go super strength on it. Nice good hand tight is all you're going to need in order to make sure that it's proper. You don't need to do anything uh, ridiculous in terms of a specific foot pounds. This is it. All you have to do is set that here. Notice how the entire opening of the volute for that exhaust housing uh, has no blockage into it. So you know that it's definitely made for a Garrett uh, style turbine housing. It's stainless steel. Notice how when you have the weld flange, same thing happens here. Okay. Now the weld flange itself mates up to this so you can put the actual T-bolt clamp on, but notice how there's no interference for the outlet. So this is a great way of being able to convert your turbocharger into one that has a V-band flange with it. And notice if you compare that to it, they're about the same distance. Okay. So if you look at here, that's about the same distance between the two. Okay. What are the drawbacks of this? Because there's always some sort of drawback. Of course, it's not as cool as a tile housing or one that's got an integrated V-band flange into your T3 housing, especially for those that are reserved for it. But the other thing that we found is a slight drawback for it is for those that have some tight cramped engine base bases, especially those that want to keep air conditioning or uh, other amenities within uh, a front wheel drive application that has a lot of all that in there, uh, you may have some difficulty with your downpipe okay, to be able to fit uh, this entire flanging system. This adds about an inch to an inch and a half of uh, room uh, so that may push your downpipe further closer to the uh, you know some sort of uh, obstruction that may get in the way of the way that the uh, downpipe bends. Okay. The other problem that we have kind of noticed for that for some people but not for everyone is the fact that yes you actually have to weld this flange onto your downpipe. Unfortunately there's no bolt on uh, flange system for the downpipe side. So yes, you're going to have to take the four bolt off and be able to uh, weld that flange on there and if and possibly even uh, relocate the downpipe by a couple of inches to be able to make room for this. So for those that are really planning on using this type of system, uh, really you want to make sure that you don't really plan on trying to have any type of uh, AC system or condenser system that's on this. So if you notice, it's taking me just a couple of minutes here after I've unloosened it to take everything off. It really doesn't take much. Okay. If you notice after just a couple of twists, it's only been a couple of seconds here, everything is cleaned off. And you have your original mating surface again. So all you have left is now your original turbine housing. That was that. So if you need to be able to resell it or be able to utilize something else and machine it for a different type of uh, turbocharger in the near future, you now still have this full integrated uh, um, housing that has all full integrity into it as before. So you go from that to this and it's a lot less expensive overall than it would be 
to be able to uh, have one welded on and then take the risk of an exhaust leak or other issues itself. I personally find the 4 bolt not to be too much of a problem, uh, but for those that really have uh, the need to be able to take their turbos apart uh, several times, this is a better option. I hope this really helped. If there's any questions, go ahead and just give us an email over at info at speedtrackconsulting.com. Take care. Happy boosting.